From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Alina Howder. Spring may be here, but it sure doesn't feel like it. A winter storm warning is in place until midnight Sunday, but area residents felt its effects as early as this morning. The Dick Johnson Bridge in Lockwood was closed in both directions this morning because of slick spots, resulting in several multi-car accidents. Take a look at this photo of, of a vehicle accident on the King Avenue overpass here in Billings. And 100 miles east of Billings, this is what the roads looked like over in Forsyth this morning. Rosebud County Sheriff's Office posted these photos on their social media page earlier today. The westbound lane was closed on Interstate 94 near, near mile marker 11 because of an accident. One slide off and numerous vehicles struggling to make it up a hill in that location. And good Saturday evening, everyone. Taking a look at our clouds as well as our radar right now. Already getting more active. A winter storm moving in in early spring to Montana and Wyoming. Some areas of rain and snow mixes around Sheridan, Wyoming. We've had some mist turning over to some light snow around Billings. Nothing very heavy, although areas around Roundup, about an inch and a half of snow already and more snow already falling in northeastern Montana. And we are just at the very beginning of what's coming. So the temperatures today in Billings didn't change very much. Started the day at 25, had a high of only 30 with a little bit of mist at times. Now we still have almost a 20 inch deficit with our snowfall, but there is more snow. We're going to try to make up some of that over your seven day forecast coming up. The missing endangered person advisory for 16 year old Native American male Montez Other Medicine has expired. The advisory was issued on behalf of the Billings Police Department and Bureau of Indian Affairs Friday night, but Montez has still not been located at this time. He's five foot nine inches tall, 160 pounds and has brown eyes and brown hair. He has pierced ears and a septum piercing. He was last seen in Hardin on March 19th. Law enforcement is concerned for his physical and mental health due, due to a history of suicide attempts, self-harm, and a lack of prescription medicines. If you make contact with or have information regarding Montez, please contact the Bureau of Indian Affairs Missing and Murdered Unit at 883-560-2065. You can text the keyword BIAMMU with tips to 847-411 or call 911. It's what some are calling a solar scam. Several Billings residents are complaining about a new solar company going door to door, offering a promise that sounds too good to be true. Tonight, our Kelsey Boggs investigates the claims and why you should be on alert. Solar panels like these are becoming a common sight on top of houses nationwide. Here in Billings, we have a few local solar companies working to make the Magic City more green. They say going solar allows you to own your own energy and increases the value of your home but worry one of their competitors is making claims they can't back up. A power bill is something that we just get accustomed to paying every month. Homeowners know just how expensive utility bills can get. Over the course of 25 years, you can literally spend over $100,000 on your power bill. One reason solar panels have been marketed as a smart long-term play. Solar, it gives you the option to own your power. It's something that, that you get to own as opposed to rent. Sean Sedaris and Justice Graham know that pitch well. Sedaris co-owns Wegner Roofing and Solar. We've got some good local companies. Graham owns Yellow Ball Roofing and Solar. We get a lot of referrals. We've grown very quickly. While the two typically consider each other competition, they are uniting to spread awareness after they each received multiple inquiries from customers about a new solar company in town making a sales pitch they say is flat out wrong. The type of clientele that can, you know, really become like victimized by this high pressure door to door are people that just aren't educated. The last thing we want is for solar to get a bad rap and for these these posts to continue to show up on customer watchdog. According to the men, that company, Solar Pros, has sales reps promising Billings residents that if they add solar, they won't have to pay taxes for 10 years, which isn't true. Essentially what they're saying is you don't have to pay property taxes for 10 years. I mean, they are making it that bold, which is absolutely not 
correct. Many have shared their experiences with the company on social media. MTN News did some digging and found that the company is an independent authorized dealer of Freedom Forever. Ty Trippany, the director of customer operations for Freedom Forever, tells us they are disheartened by online comments and believe the claims are unsubstantiated, saying Freedom Forever, quote, highly encourages all consumers to obtain multiple solar quotes, have a comprehensive understanding of any contract, and speak with a licensed tax professional before making any purchase. But Graham and Sedaris worry the company is giving solar companies like theirs a bad name and wants consumers to be aware. I think the biggest thing is yeah, educating people on how the tax credit works, the purpose of solar, and just be aware. I'm not mad at competition at all. It's just making sure that people know that you've got two great local options and then just get educated, right? And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. In Billings, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. The Montana Board of Education has approved an alternative pathway for obtaining teaching licensure. The new requirements allow teachers to be credentialed with a Class 2 standard certificate. To obtain the new certificate, candidates must hold a bachelor's degree from an accredited college or university, pass a background check, complete Indian education for all coursework, and successfully complete an alternative teacher certification and endorsement program. Candidates can seek endorsement in a variety of teaching fields from kindergarten and through high school and subjects like math, science, and special education. Lawmakers in the 2023 session approved a bill allowing alternative pathways to teacher licensing. The Honoring Our Youth powwow was held at Billings Skyview High School today. The event hosted by the Billings Public Schools Student Tribal Council kicked off at noon with drum circles, a flag ceremony, and an indigenous prayer. Hundreds of people gathered to celebrate the Native American cultures of students from various schools across Yellowstone County. The youth to Native American culture has always been very sacred and they're innocent, so I guess it's just another way of holding ourselves high. What I'm dancing is called the grass dance. So basically that's what you mimic the grass when you dance. They'd be in the plains, they, would, they used to dance like this to set up the teepees in the camps. There were very few people chosen for this, you had to be a warrior. Students as young as seven were invited to rent or bring ceremonial wares and participate in songs and dances. Montana State University Billings is hosting its Stellar Insights series, a celebration of all things space. From March into early April, on Tuesday, the college's library held its second installment in the month-long event where, as our Marcus Kakova reports, the Western way of looking into the night sky is being merged with stories told for centuries about the stars that fill it. There is a sense of wonder that I think everyone can feel um, when looking up at a good night sky. Space, it's where we've all come from, it's where we all live, have lived, will live. You can really feel that connection to, you know, our ancestors, to all the people who, uh, you know, have come before us and, you know, looked up at, you know, the same night sky. Somewhere along the way, we become divided in different ways, developing different identities, cultures, understandings, ideas. It's called two-eyed seeing. It is the merging of, through two lenses, an indigenous way of looking and a Western way of looking at the same topic. The librarian educators at Montana State University Billings are undoing that division. As librarians, we love, we love to share. We like to not only you know highlight our own faculty members but we're highlighting our own community members tying together the cheyenne language and understanding of the stars with a western language and understanding this project is to record the northern cheyenne star stories it really made me realize how poetic the cheyenne language is humans and stars or celestial objects in the sky are grammatically in the same category. They're both considered animate. Fostering an appreciation for similarities and differences between cultures across Yellowstone County, all of which happen to have developed under the same stars. I think I'm gonna walk away with a deeper appreciation like when you look at uh, what is called by us, you know, the Devil's Tower Monument and sort of see uh, a different perspective, the bear's claws basically creating those deep gouges and, and breaking its claws on it and basically carrying up the uh, young children up to become the stars. Marcus Kakova, MTN News. 
Easter may only be a week away, but it's never too early to celebrate. Top Sandwich Company collaborated with several Billings-based companies for their first annual Easter Egg Hop. Sponsored by Destiny Contreras Photography, Coupon Banker, and Billings State Farm, the Easter Egg Hop ran from 11 to 3 p.m. at Top's location on Grant Road. The free event featured photo ops with the Easter Bunny, the chance to find hundreds of eggs, and candy as far as the eye could see, giving five-year-old Vandervelt Camp a chance to make new friends with folks like the Ilanji family who just happened to grab tops for lunch. Feels kind of happy in my heart and I'm happy to meet new friends and I'm a little bit shy but I think I can push through it. It's great, they love it. She keeps trying to find more eggs. I'm like, that's enough. <laughs> If you missed out on the fun today, there's another Easter egg hop tomorrow from 11 to 3 at the Tops location on Shiloh Road, the first annual event of many to come. Special Olympic teams from all over Montana will gather in Billings this May to compete at the state summer games. Law enforcement agents across Montana geared up for this exciting event with the annual Special Olympics Law Enforcement Torch Run. MTN's Tom Buchanan is in Helena with the story. Law enforcement agents from throughout the state are gathering in Helena this weekend to prepare for the annual Special Olympics Law Enforcement Torch Run. They're the most amazing individuals I've ever met and uh, their stories are so inspiring and it just brings that happiness and that goodness into your heart that make the job that much more fun to do. Throughout the United States, dozens of communities participate in law enforcement torch runs. These events raise money and awareness for the Special Olympics. In Montana, torch runs will take place from April through May, leading up to the Special Olympics Summer Games in Billings. Keynote speaker and grandson of Special Olympics founder Eunice Kennedy Shriver, Tim Shriver Jr., says that law enforcement participation helps bring a sense of importance and weight to the Games. And oftentimes, the athletes of Special Olympics are people who for a long time have been told they don't matter. And Special Olympics is a place where they come and they matter, and the law enforcement showing up says these events, these Games matter. We support you, we are behind you, and that has a tremendous impact on Special Olympics broadly, on the athletes, the families themselves, and has been for a long time. Trooper with the Montana Highway Patrol, Laramie Stefani, came down from Kalispell for this weekend. He says he enjoys getting to know the athletes and supporting them during the games. It's a sense of for us to give back to the community, and why not, what, what, what not a better group to give back to than, than these the most inspiring people I've ever met. Uh, are these athletes and uh, we, we want to be right here with them as they conquer goals and accom make accomplishments and we want to be right there at the podium with them, you know, raising up their hands and handing them an award and making them feel just as special as we feel. Law enforcement officials and Special Olympics staff are gathering in Helena to not only celebrate the work that has been done, but to also prep for the work ahead. In order to celebrate the work that's been done this past year and in past years and to plan for the year ahead. And a big part of that is actually bringing new officers into the fold and training them on what it means to be a part of this, how they can engage, and how departments all across the state can further take part in supporting this mission. And Special Olympics is not only for law enforcement. All interested folks can get involved and volunteer to support the athletes. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2. More than 100 people are dead after a lethal assault on a Moscow area concert venue. We'll tell you the latest after the break. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. More than 130 people have been killed in a terror attack near the heart of Russia. 11 people, including four gunmen, have been detained in connection with the lethal assault on a Moscow area concert venue, according to Russian state media. Scripps News national correspondent Vanessa Mishiana has the latest. Tears are shed in Flowers Place outside the scene of a massacre as mourners gather to remember the dozens killed in a terror attack on a concert outside of Moscow Friday. Russian officials witnessing the gruesome aftermath firsthand, later visiting victims at a hospital. Video shows gunmen shooting people at point-blank range, the roof of the venue collapsing after fire ripped through the building. This has all the hallmarks of ISIS. While Russian officials continue to tie the attack to Ukraine, saying attackers were from, quote, not far from the Ukrainian border, ISIS has gone 
gone public claiming responsibility. Kyiv has denied any involvement. I don't think the uh, Ukrainians are going to go after a target like this. I think they'd go after uh, oil refineries, radar sites, military targets. This is clearly a war crime. Uh, they wouldn't do it. U.S. officials say they have confirmed that ISIS-K and ISIS affiliate carried out the attack. Intelligence officials saying they had warned Russia that ISIS was planning a terror attack on Russian soil. But Vladimir Putin dismissed those warnings, something that may haunt the leader who just won another landslide election. Well, it really is remarkable, and Putin will likely face some scrutiny about this. He was so dismissive, uh, suggesting that this was blackmail, uh, extortion by Western structures, as he put it, uh, in an effort to destabilize Russian society. Meanwhile, Chinese President Xi Jinping extended condolences to President Putin. China's state media saying she was shocked hearing of the attack. Vanessa Mishanya, Scripps News. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.